on the last offer one. We're delighted to be here. We're, we're prepared, we're ready, we're excited. It's the second time Toronto FC have opened the season in Seattle. I'll do it quick. Don't switch off. Here's Jermaine Defoe once again. Jermaine Defoe gets his second of the game. It's always nice when when you get a chance as a forward and, and your teammates know that it's a goal. Uh, after that 2-1 to victory in Seattle, coming home, you can see how the players are excited for the home debut. Guys, do remember, never play the playoff guy. Keep the chances. Toronto FC looking to win back-to-back -back games to start the season for the first time in club history. Not much room to operate, but that's a lovely ball through for Gilberto. Now back for Jermaine Defoe. You started off the season very well. You're going to Utah quite early in the year. Um, forget everything else. There's the, the altitude, the travel time. The team is allowed to take advantage of a league rule here where there is no direct flights to Utah from Toronto. It's one of two charters they're allowed to use a year because of league rules, which will certainly help as far as fatigue and being in airports uh, to get out to Sandy, Utah. Always a tough place to play, but based on what you've seen this season in those two games, uh, can Toronto FC make that a win and three points on the road. Everything is clicking on all cylinders right now and hopefully they keep those clean sheets as uh, season goes on. The back four, Daniil Henry, Caldwell, Bloom has been a, a surprise in our back line uh, or when he comes in off the bench. Uh, they have been doing an unbelievable job. It should be an exciting match from Rio Tinto Stadium in Sandy, Utah. Toronto FC uh, looking to go 3-0 and on the season. Let's hope the referees don't play too much of a part tonight, Nigel, because what we've gotten, we've got two fantastic teams in the field here. Let's make hope show the storylines are all about those players. We're just, what, six and a half minutes into the game, and already the insults have started, the pushing and shoving has, so we'll wait to see whether the referee picks up on that. And Sabarillo has gone down, and the referee's pointed to the penalty spot. Sabarillo against Julio Cesar. Nothing, Real Salt Lake, nothing the Brazilian goalkeeper could do about it. The fans in full voice, but problems here perhaps for Toronto FC. Play goes on, there's a lot of people in that penalty area. They let it run. It's going to come to Gill. It's two. It's Luis Gill. Inside half an hour. Frustrating half for Toronto FC without doubt. Need to be better and maybe a tactical change as well. Well, an interesting half-time talk coming up for these two. Lack of focus causes them sloppiness in everything we do. Everything we do. Lack of focus, then it goes decision-making. Decision-making goes. And it takes us two goals down to wake up. And then you finally wake up. Because getting ready for this, because we've got targets on our back. Every game we play. Is at the moment, for the 20, 20 minutes of that game, they just bullied you. That's all they did. So just calm down, focus. The game will come, we'll get our chances. But we've got to start doing this as 10, 11 players, not as individuals. And let's not uh, kid ourselves. Real Salt Lake are a very, very good, very consistent team. More pressure, more defending, more organization to do for Toronto FC. Sabarillo is in here, he might make it three, he has made it three, and that might just be game over. Alvaro Sabarillo, his second of the game. Well, Defoe's night is done, he's gone straight down the tunnel, so perhaps he felt something go. Not for the first time, Gilberto finds himself limping. Uh, 
after a challenge from Beckerman. Here's Garcia. Can Garcia? Well, is he taken out? Julio Cesar at the same time. Garcia and Julio Cesar have ended up on the deck. Now, who came off worst? Mr. Toledo whistles the lips. It's the final time he'll blow it. And the superstars of Toronto FC have been brought crashing back down to earth. We didn't play well enough. Um, and so that, that's the most frustrating. You know, we, we got off to a, a good start. Uh, to this season in, uh, in terms of two two good wins. So we have to look ourselves in the mirror and and now you know, be honest enough with ourselves to know that it's a, it's a long season, still a lot of work to do. Um, you know, we knew that before, but um, you know, important now is to to show uh, a good response in Columbus. Gelling a team of any sport, in any sport in the world, it takes time. You can't just throw a collection of players together and say, get on with it. And as Ryan Nelson said to us, at lunchtime, we're a team with the target on our back and the pressure to win every game is immense. First side of MLS for the new signing, number 20, Izzy Nakajima Farron. Contract became official as well with Izzy Nakajima Farron. He made his debut with Toronto FC. Izzy Nakajima Farron, the Canadian. It's funny because everywhere I've played, I've always a, I was always a foreigner. So usually the local guys would hang out together, the other whatever Brazilians would hang out together, and then whatever the international, um, the rest of the world kind of, those guys kind of get together, you know? And I was always within the, the foreigner, where, wherever I was, Denmark, Japan, or even Singapore, or even, um, you know, Cyprus. So when you're a foreigner in a football team, you usually kind of, kind of fade out because you don't really understand what they're saying but they're joking around they're having a laugh and then you kind of feel the atmosphere and you kind of start giggling but you don't really understand it so you're like but this time you understand what's you know what's everything is going around you as we move forward and go on we want to win uh, obviously first and foremost but we want to win with uh, with a Canadian essence Canadian core to us um, and, uh, and obviously, as it being an international and, and a Canadian international is very important to that. <laughs> being on this training, it really felt like I was like on a Canadian camp. You know, like there's six, seven guys that I know, and for once, I was the the local guys. You know, I was, this is this is my country kind of thing. We have Ash, Daniel, Bex, uh, Young Jordan, Hamilton, um, Ozo, Diro being an older one. We've got we've got so many uh, young and experienced uh, Canadians and I think it's important that we have that, that, that core to our football club. We've got, the, we've got the British banter and we've got the American, yeah, you know, this is all, but it's all the same language, which is really nice. Welcome to JDTV. This afternoon we have a special guest, top professional, great player, Daniel Henry. Just want to ask him a few questions. Um, I'd just like to know, um, you know, it's been a good start to the season. Um, on a personal note, how are you feeling? Ryan Nelson is very, very big on Daniil Henry. Thinks he's got a great future in the game. Well, it's not just Ryan Nelson big on Daniil Henry. He went to train at West Ham United in the off-season and they were highly impressed with what they saw from the young Canadian defender. Daniil is very, very family-oriented. Like, um, if Daniil goes away within, should I say this, within a week of being away, he's ready to come home. <laughs> so, to my left, my oldest cousin, Shane, McMaster championship winner <laughs> of the Van Heer Cup. Which year was that? 2011. 2011. He's very close to his cousins, even the ones that are in England or in Florida, no matter where he is. Um, he, he, he likes the family unit. <laughs> okay, you have to understand. In this house. Oh man, here we go. Let's go. The real football player. <laughs> and then the two guys that wear tights. <laughs> you wear tights. <laughs> Under my shorts. <laughs> you wear tights out in the house. I listen to this Sunday. I listen, listen to, to this it. today. So oh, Sunday at the dinner table. We'll make up something. There you go. <laughs> I feel more blessed than anything. Because uh, I know definitely even coming out of GTA, there's a lot of top players. I, I'd say even better than me. Um, growing up and I thought that none of it is this mentality and, and how much you believe in yourself and how how much you what what you would do to get to this level. Um, 
See, if she opened my eyes and gave me an opportunity, you know, I'd never take that away from them, and I respect them so much. Like, this is my home. It's my academy jersey. That's when I used to wear number 44. I still keep this one. It's probably, like, one of the only ones that I'll actually keep. When I thought my football career was done, it was about 15, 16, because if you don't make the provincial team, um, there's not much to do, you know what I mean? Um, I went to a few showcase tournaments, and there's schools interested in me, but um, going to college or whatever, it was never really my my goal, our dream, um, I wanted to play professional, period. That lady right there, Kim Jansen, Kimberly Jansen. Um, Kim is the reason why I finished high school. I stopped going to school, kind of um, the tides, tides changed when basically football was my, my priority and I tried going to school and it, it wasn't working. I couldn't keep up with the workload, but um, Kim really helped me, steer, um, got me back on track and make sure she pushed me to make sure I'm handing my work, finishing on time. and. Um, she's, she's really vital. I, I really appreciate everything that she's done for me. It's crazy how it was 2012, 2013, I believe, um, when I was awarded um, a, Queen, a Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee medal. This was that Olympic qualifying when I, when I scored my first international goal against the U.S. So to me, this was one of the greatest feelings of my football career so far. Daniil loves the fact that he is Canadian. Yes. Above everything else, he is Canadian, and he, he's not afraid to say that. We're Jamaicans. He is Canadian. Toronto. Um, Toronto in general as a whole. Um, a multicultural big city. Um, seeing how much support we have, I'll never forget. It's the same feeling I got since the first day I stepped on that on that pitch playing with the first team. This is my first time in the school. I scored on April 28th, 2012. My celebration, I got a yellow card for it, but who cares? The first jersey I ever wore for the club. Seeing the Red Patch boys in their corner screaming like the, all the other fans, but it's that, it's that, it's not pressure. It's like they're chanting and they want you to do well. And when we get those three points, and we can cheer and we can and we can we can go and hold our chest high. We're doing it for the city of Toronto. When he started this journey and we embraced that journey, we never, never thought that the Neil would be playing soccer professionally. We are proud of him. He should be proud of himself for the accomplishment. However, we are very we feel very strongly about him being humble. We have right now a serious, serious buzz going around Toronto that can honestly be recognized around the world. You can see us doing it right now, but it, we're just at the beginning of our season and we're not gonna be overconfident. We're gonna be humble. And all the other people that thought maybe it was a joke, or, oh, he plays for Toronto or whatever. But I'll always stick behind Toronto and my country because I know one day I can be the one that says, I help Toronto, I help Canada get to where they are today. Toronto FC coming off a tough loss in Salt Lake City, but not only that, they've lost two players now because of that game as well. Caldwell obviously getting suspended and Defoe hurting his hamstring again. A lot of pieces to move around, but those are some big voids to fill for Toronto FC. Sunset's right down over that way, which is pretty nice to eat dinner on my bed and <laughs> watch the sunset. On this side you have the, the city. You can't really see the uh, Rogers Center or CN Tower. It's a nice view at night when you, you got all these lights going on. It's pretty sweet. Well, this is an opportunity for the youngsters to come in and hopefully have the impact that Ryan Nelson wants to see from them. If you thought they were having a tough time against Real Salt Lake playing in the altitude, uh, I think Columbus will, will really be the eye opener for this team because I think Columbus is a much better team. It's the fourth week, so you don't ex expect really to to test our depth this early. It's usually in the middle of the season when we start playing doubles in a week uh, that, like, the bench starts coming into play. Usually you have your, your starters in, and, and now it's, it's week four. We're playing Columbus number one team, and um, we have a couple of key players out, and so our, our bench is going to have to step up and, and carry the team. There's one player in particular on Toronto FC that's looking for that win, and that's Nick Haglin, who might get his first start here in Columbus, his hometown, in front of all of his family and friends. Anywhere from like 30 to 50. It's a lot of people are texting me like, we're going to be at the game. I know like a guy that's from Xavier found that they have tickets. My girlfriend has a friend that 
parents work for MLS, so they got 10 tickets. Everyone from my neighborhood's coming, so it's going to be a huge group of people. I think they're all sitting behind Toronto FC bench, so there should be a big following of red behind us. I've been thinking about an MLS debut for a, a long time. Ever since I got drafted, I'm thinking, when's that first game? When's that first game where I'm going to put the Toronto FC jersey on, play for the team? And so, yeah, I've been definitely thinking about it. Oh, it takes like... Uh... Probably anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes, depending on traffic. When I get on the 401, that's when the traffic comes. You'll be in standstill for like a couple minutes. I wouldn't say nerve. I mean, I would say I would be more nervous if I wasn't in the, my home city. I think there's a comfort about playing in front of the people that I've played in front of for so long. It's kind of fun to go back and if I get on the field, um, it's gonna be, it's just gonna be fun to kind of reminisce where I was and to now where I've come. You're gonna play on the left side, you're on the right side. We'll go over there and just hit it back and forth to each other. You can hit a few and then, so come over here. Just want him to get the ball and a good first pass. Just simple, just connect the first pass and then he'll play or win a header or something like that, you know. One, one down this side with me and one down there and you can play it back and forth. It's always really good to go back to somewhere where, you, you know, you, I played basically the majority of my career. It was always a great relationship for me with the fans. They just kind of really kind of took to me and I, I guess I took to them in return and I love playing there. I love, you know, representing the club and it was a, it was a good time. I, I don't look back with any regrets. I remember coming up here, I remember taking corner here and getting streamers thrown at you and all sorts of stuff and the fans were just always on you and um, it was just, it was fun. It was a good atmosphere. It's got nice and tidy, everything's clean, everything's clean, ball's moving. Move off the ball. Let's go, man. Get it going. Get it going. It needs to be better, all of us. When we lose it, we close. Movement off the ball. Let's get moving. Get moving. When this opportunity came up, it wasn't an easy decision for me to make to come to Toronto, um, especially from Columbus, and knowing the, the rivalry and maybe where Toronto had finished in the past so many times, and I was coming from something where pretty much everywhere I went in town, you know, people would say hi or looked after me. And um, But when I talked to Ryan and started talking about football against soccer, he um, kind of laid out the plan that he had for TFC and what he wanted to do. And it was an opportunity I never would have forgiven myself if I didn't come here. And I wanted to be part of something really special. We ready ourselves for kickoff here and the fans ready to welcome their team undefeated to start the season. Toronto FC with only the one loss to their point in the season. Do I miss Columbus at times? Yeah, of course, it was home for so long, but I'm so glad that Ryan and I stayed in touch. We had a mutual respect for each other and for the game and that phone call came through. They're not sitting back, early pressure. This creates a turnover. Slides the ball underneath and a nice play by Haglin coming through. There's a dangerous crossing and just cleared. Not out of trouble yet. And a nice job by Haglin. I think Haglin has not looked out of place playing in his first Major League Soccer game. Nice little play in. Gilberto puts one off the bar. TFC keep the ball deep in Columbus. End of the pitch, Bradley makes a run. He'll get to this ball, slides it in. How about that for Bradley as he slides it in from what looked like an almost impossible angle. I think it's about as good a half as you could expect from a, what you might consider to be an undermanned Toronto team. And there's another good example of Bradley coming back to the top of the 18 to help disrupt thing. And Beckler's right there with him, not giving an inch. Edge of the box. Here's a chance to tip it home. And the second goal of the game for Toronto FC comes off the foot of the youngster who comes in from Calgary. And Farron makes it 2 0 Toronto. Could that have been a, uh, a better debut in Major League Soccer for you? Maybe if I would have scored a couple goals. <laughs> but no, absolutely. That was an incredible experience to come to Columbus and play on this pitch with these guys and get the shutout here against a team that's been killing it lately. Uh, it's incredible. Playing in front of people that I know, I knew after the game I was going to see my family, my girlfriend and everything. So it was going to be, I know, win or loss, they were going to be there for me. So they absolutely took uh, some pressure off of me. I think people were questioning whether we had depth on this team, and I think uh, here's your answer, 2-0 at Columbus. Toronto FC celebrating their first win at Cruz Stadium since September 10th of 2011. 
And this team is three and one, and they get this win, Paul, on a night when many would have given them a bit of a pass for not having a good night, given all the players that we mentioned been out of the lineup. We seem to be coming together as a group. That question mark about their depth going into the game has been answered. Just joining us, no Defoe, no Bradley. Just past the quarter hour, no goals. Just short of the midway mark in the first half, nil-nil. Just past the three-quarter mark in the match. Still goalless at BMO Field. I thought there was only going to be one team that was going to win that game. Jackson meets it in the air and dips it. The cruelty of football, isn't it? When you when you hit the post and then 30 seconds later they score. But I'm um, really proud of the guys. Um, I thought they were uh, I thought they were brilliant, um, especially at the second half. They drove they drove on the game. We did everything. They just didn't kind of fall for us, and um, and they just got that one chance. Referee David Gantar checks his watch. It is all over at BMO Field. And an understrength Toronto FC fall at home to the Rapids. It'll leave you like a crime, I fear. Fade away the promises we made. Another beard is sweet and love my tears Drinking back those cold, familiar ways Just as Toronto FC's depth on their bench was being tested and we thought that we'd seen all the injuries we could, uh, we did not. We saw Di Rosario leave the game, clinching his hamstring a little bit. It, it's unfortunate because in the game you're trying to push yourself uh, to a certain extent and I know Dwayne and what he expects from himself and especially with all you know Defoe and, and Bradley injured he's trying to raise his game and carry this team. Everything that they've gone through with the players that they're missing due to injuries, uh, it's very frustrating. And not only that, but then you look at the, the pitch that they're playing on and you're trying to work things out, you're trying to build up the play, but nothing was really clicking for them, for neither both teams. Obviously we've had a few injuries, but um, at the end of the day everybody's ready. Um, we have a very deep team this year and you know, guys are itching to get playing time. We just feel if we put in performances like that we're going to win a lot more games than we're going to lose. It's bitterly disappointing to lose at home. Uh, you know, it was a scrappy game. It wasn't a game that we, we utterly dominated and we, we, we moved the ball. Nobody can in that part, but we did feel that we were we had done enough to, to win the match. Uh, a lot of questions that you know, Ryan Nelson and the coaching staff have to figure out now, and hopefully some of these players come back sooner than later. <laughs> 